I'm gonna make applies to a lot more than just Linux distributions. It also applies to display servers, to window managers, to the core programs you choose to use, and if you want to get existential about it, it probably applies to real life too. But I'm gonna talk about why I don't distro hop, why I've pretty much stayed with Arch for basically the entire time I've used Linux, why I don't constantly try out new programs when it comes to big things like window managers or my text editor, etc. I'm gonna start by answering the question that a ton of people have asked me, which is will I use Hyperlind and why or why not? And I've got I've got two things to say about this. Um, number one, absolutely not. And number two, if you are using it and you love it, then power to you and keep using it. And I'm gonna elaborate on on these two points because uh, at face value they might sound a little bit contradictory to each other, but I think they actually go hand in hand. And that is gonna be the the overarching point of this video. No pun intended. <laughs> but all right, so why do I not want to use Hyperlend? If you've been watching my channel for a while, you could probably fill in the blank with that. Um, it's probably pretty obvious why Hyperlend is really at the opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to what I look for in a window manager. And I generally look for very minimal programs when possible because um, one of the beauties of free and open source software and one of the things that has made me interested in it is the ability to really get into the code and understand how things work, especially as somebody who doesn't have a background in coding. So generally, it actually takes me a while to understand how programs work. And you probably don't see this considering I'm generally uploading, you know, 10 or 20 minute videos. You don't see the hours of me trying to understand what the program is doing before I can clearly explain it in a video. And so for me, having a minimal program, having something that is really meant to be small and hackable, like DWM, like Suckless Software, that is really appealing, um, as opposed to something much, much larger like Hyperlend. Um, and another point that, you know, Hyperlend is very aesthetically pleasing. It's very much, you know, supposed to be visually entertaining. It's got all the animations. It's got like a whole plugin system, all that sort of stuff. That's just not something I'm interested in. That's just not something that I really want in my window manager. But by the same token, you know, more power to you if that is what you want. And that is the beauty of free and open source software, right? We all have different use cases. We all have different preferences in our software. We all have different things that we use a computer to do. So the more different opinions that people have about software, the more good software gets created because the more differences you'll have that somebody sees, you know, I want this to work like this. And then they make their own piece of software that does it their way. So. I think having these different opinions when it comes to software and having, you know, different, completely different types of uh, end user experience, I guess would be the way to put it, completely different types of end user experience when it comes to window managers, that's a good thing. And I think we should be encouraging the people who enjoy the opposite things that we enjoy. So um, for example, me who, you know, prefers minimal software, I think it's great if you prefer Hyperlend and vice versa. I think people who are more interested in Hyperlend and, you know, very maximal software that's going to be highly, highly configurable when it comes to the, the visual animated side of things. I think having an appreciation for why somebody would prefer more minimal software is a good thing. We got to appreciate why we have different tastes in software because that's how we improve software overall, right? So by that logic, I want to talk about another point that a lot of people have asked me, which is, do I use Wayland? When am I, when am I going to move to Wayland, etc., etc.? I have already moved to Wayland on my laptop. I have used Wayland on my laptop for like, I want to say eight or nine months now. And honestly, the main reason for me is security, okay? Wayland is undoubtedly better than Xorg in terms of security. And that is by far the biggest appeal to me. Other than that, um, there's nothing too crazy about Wayland to me. I mean, yes, I'm aware there's, you know, other improvements too, but really security is the big one for me. But I will say, you know, as much as Wayland does improve certain things, it also adds other issues and other annoyances. So I have reasoning for why I want to use it on my laptop, but I also have reasoning for why I don't think it's the right time for me to move to it on desktop. I probably will move to it at some point on desktop, but now is not the time for that. So um, that's my thoughts there. And again, this is the sort of thing where everybody is gonna have a different use case and everybody is gonna have different preferences when it comes to software. Okay, some people might be using applications that really, really struggle to work with Wayland. 
And by that logic, they might want to stay on Xorg. Somebody else might not be, and they might say, hey, Wayland is way better in these other aspects, so I should just go ahead and move to it. So that's my thoughts on that. Um, I have a build of DWL that I've been working on, but I'm really not fully satisfied with it. Honestly, I've looked at another, uh, a lot of other minimalist window managers. Like, DWM is far from the only minimalist window, window manager that is in the sort of suckless vein of, you know, philosophical, like, keep things minimal, keep things hackable, right? There's other window managers that are in the same vein. So I'm sort of thinking if it's possible to maybe use something else on, on Wayland. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm still looking into it, but when I find something that I'm really ultimately happy with, then I will probably make some videos about it. But I try to make a point of not making a video on a piece of software until I'm certain that I'm gonna be staying on it and using it because I don't wanna make a video and then walk back on what I said like three months later, you know? So anyways, on to the, the big question, which is distro hopping. Something that I think people have been asking me for a very long time is why do I stick with Arch considering systemd exists and systemd kind of sucks? And you know, I don't disagree with you guys. I don't really like systemd um, for a lot of reasons. The biggest reason being that it is so centralized. Um, I really don't like it as an init system, but yet I, I stick with Arch. I've been using Arch pretty much everywhere. Why do I stick with Arch? Well, the, the real answer to that is systemd isn't so much of an annoyance that it makes me want to reinstall my entire system. I've had this system over here running Arch for, I don't even know how many years at this point. I think I, I did end up reinstalling at one point, so um, there's that. But, you know, I've had it running Arch for forever. I don't have a reason to completely hop distros and systemd maybe does something super annoying once a year, right? It's, it's an init system. It's not, you know, <laughs> it's not like the core thing that I'm interacting with 24 seven. I'm not messing around with system D 24 seven. I'm, I'm doing work. I'm doing other stuff on my computer where system D is like barely even visible. It's barely even there. So it doesn't annoy me enough to make me want to immediately hop to Artix or immediately hop to anything else that has a different init system. If and when I reinstall my OS for whatever reason, yeah, I'll, I'll probably move to something else that doesn't have systemd. But again, to me, it's, it's the same argument as with Xorg and Wayland. Like, at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal to me, even though I do have, you know, some level of preference about it. I have some level of an, an, an opinion on it. It's not that big of a deal. So that's my thoughts on, on distros and distro hopping. And, you know, that's really the core point that I want to drive home, okay? At the end of the day, we're all here because we, you know, enjoy Linux, we enjoy free and open source software. Um, shout out to anybody on BSD, um, you're part of the community too. But, you know, we're all here for the same reason. And I think while it's good to have opinions and, um, you know, reasoning for why you pick the software you pick, I think it's, you know, good to have a reason for, I'm on this distro because of this reasoning. I think it doesn't make sense to have any sort of, you know, infighting or elitism over what's better and what's worse when it comes to the end user, because a lot of people are going to be using different software or a different distro than you for reasoning that applies to them and doesn't apply to you. So it doesn't make sense to critique them over something where they probably have pretty valid reasoning for why they're using something, just as you have valid reasoning for why you're using something. And, you know, maybe maybe I'm just stating the obvious, maybe this entire video is just me stating the obvious over and over. Um, but I think, you know, it never hurts to remind people to be respectful and, you know, to understand that we all have different things we want in software and that is what makes software better. Anyways, that's about it. I hope that answered your questions. I'll see you next time. Peace.